so number one topic to get on to chat about chat about number one so i've been fooling around with um chat gpt this past weekend and other bits of uh, you know ai and stuff because of the recent update and you know it kind of being in the news at the moment and it's been pretty trippy i'm not gonna lie um it's been pretty good in terms of dj sets because for the longest time i'd kind of have to go through this process which every dj has to do where you just have to listen to a lot of shit and then you kind of figure out what works with what put it into playlist maybe have different themes and ideas in your head that you might think about maybe note some songs that you listen to or they might hear in passing in a video in a shop whatever maybe but sometimes it can be hard to kind of like start to start to fill bits in and that and sometimes it's nice to have an idea on like different songs that fit different song not each songs that fit each other that are within the same sort of bpm range and what i found with chat gpt what i did is i, I kind of there's a track that i wanted to like add on to my mix which is the weekend gasoline from his recent album dorma fm and i basically chat i basically put a command into chat gpt and said find similar songs like with the weekend gasoline within a two bpm mark or i think a two to five bpm range and it went out and basically gave me a list of 10 songs and then from those 10 songs I can basically start um, using, you know, one or two to kind of be launching off points for different ideas on what I can fit into a mix. So essentially, if you wanted to, you could just put an entire playlist of soon songs down for your DJ mix and say, hey, find me 10 of the best techno songs that came out between, you know, 1999 and 2005 within the BPM range of 130 and 150. And it'll give you an entire list and you can just use that and mix it into a fucking DJ mix. It's pretty crazy. It's pretty, pretty, pretty crazy. So I've been smashing that. And of course, in Uche is saying, yeah, I'm refusing to get ChatGPT. I don't think the world needs students using that shit. Yeah, but I've, I've read reports of fucking ChatGPT passing the bar exam, like insane. Um, it's been able to pass other entry levels things. There's a there's a girl actually in the UK who was able to appeal a parking ticket. She got a parking ticket and she didn't want to pay it because she didn't think it was necessary. Or no, she did. She basically thinks she got it in, incorrectly. Went to appeal it and then she writ the appeal using ChatGPT. Just basically put in the prompt of like, "Hey, this is the appeal letter to contract." Da, 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 and ChatGPT generated a, a script and then she kind of used that and kind of you know sent that off for appeal and won and got the charge re kind of revoked. So that obviously is working and going that way, but you can also see the damages of it because in the work that I was doing um, prior, where I was doing a lot of like online customer service, um, I was basically the person in the chat box that you speak to for online stores or like, you know, complaints about your clothes not getting there or you need a refund. A lot of that shit really with with only few exceptions it could be done automate you could you could automate that easily and having like an ai client that can just answer some basic questions as like when can i expect my refund for my return where's my tracking number have you got this in this size that can all be done with ai you don't really need me so it kind of takes me out of the workforce and the only thing you'd need someone like me was for like you know high touch point stuff or like detailed things that like i don't know if you wanted to get an, an an idea on certain colors or things coming up in the future maybe that sort of stuff that might be something that can kind of go there but another aspect i thought that would really kind of impact my work is my other bit of experience i've got on my um you know work in terms of employment stuff is i did a lot of marketing i did a lot of social media managing basically what bgl did for brendan so that's why i get ptsd looking at him and he kind of scares me because that's basically the horror of any person working in social media is ending up being the 40 year old social media manager for some shitty brand you don't care about and having to fucking retweet and share stuff on social it kills you even though it pays well it's fucking annoying and it's an easy job but it's annoying but i know for a lot of my job at that time a lot of part of the job was to create a content calendar and what you do if you're a social media manager a content calendar is that you basically you know spec out what types of content you want to drop on each day and usually it'll be you know let's, let's say st paddy's day it'll be a st paddy's day post maybe it'll be something on twitter maybe something on instagram and maybe it'll be an email newsletter whatever you just think of some ideas and you kind of plot them around the schedule around the calendar and then you also insert any brand things or any overarching brand ideas or marketing pushes they want to do you basically plot them along technically that stuff could easily be done by an ai it can easily be done by an ai that's social media managing they could easily spec out and schedule 
post to go out on fucking hump to go out on burger day st paddy all these fucking you know nominal these days that people kind of you know celebrate in kind of social media way they could easily be done on top of extra content so it kind of takes me out of the workforce in both places customer service and marketing and social media that's the scary part of it like it legitimately renders my cv experience of over like 10 years doing this sort of stuff over my life it kind of renders it mute like i'm completely gone in a flash it's kind of scary <laughs> but it's basically the way of the world isn't it? i guess but there's this article here courtesy of new york times where a lot of other kind of high you know um influential sort of tech people are basically sounding the alarm and saying hey we need to kind of stop we need to chill because this AI is going too crazy. So this is courtesy of New York Times. It says Elon Musk and others call for a pause on AI, citing profound risks to society, which is pretty wild to think because they're all kind of pushing their own thing. I think Elon's trying to do his own AI. Um, he's obviously harassing. Also criticizing a lot of the open AI guys because they've gone from being a non-profit to being a profit company and obviously being absorbed by Microsoft, blah, blah, blah. And he's generally somebody that's quite open to pushing, you know, technology innovation. So if he's sounding the alarm, then you definitely know something, you know, something scary is around the corner. So it occurs to the New York Times. More than 1,000 tech leaders and researchers, including Elon Musk, have urged artificial intelligence labs to pause development on the most advanced systems, warning in an open letter that AI tools present profound risks to society and humanity. AI developers are locked in an in are locked in an out of control race to develop to deploy even more powerful digital minds than no one um, not even uh, their creators can understand predict or reliably control according to a letter which the non-profit future of life institute released on wednesday others who signed the letter include steve wasniet co-founder of apple andrew yang an entrepreneur and a 2020 presidential candidate rachel brunson and the president of bulletin automatic autom automatic sorry scientists which sets the doomsday clock these things are shaping our world says gary marcus an entrepreneur and academic who's long complained of flaws of ai we have a perfect storm of corporate responsibility widespread adoption and a lack of regulation and a huge number of unknowns ai powers chatbots like chat gpt microsoft's bing google's bard um, which can perform human-like conversations create essays and on endless variety of topics and perform more complex tasks like writing computer code the push to develop more powerful chatbots has led to a race that could determine the next latest of the tech industry but these tools have been criticized for getting details wrong and the ability to spread misinformation i'm just curious though i'm sure this has been done but i'm curious if this will also limit the amount of people who are making money on like those ebooks and doing like you know drop shipping because for some reason on my tiktok now i barely use it and stuff don't get me wrong but when i go on my made feed now i get so many people content creators talking about fucking drop shipping these kind of entrepreneur hustle type bro types who talk about drop shipping and amazon fba and shit and it's all the same nonsense right it's not that hard to kind of figure out you don't need to buy some 50 dollar ebook just to spend a couple of weeks doing it and you could probably figure it out yourself but maybe AI tools could essentially do all the work for you beforehand in terms of specking out and finding out what the best things are to buy, um, where to get them from, what to sell. Like it could do that pretty easily, even even creating copy for the listings itself. Like all that stuff that kind of create requires a lot more work and a lot more intuition that could basically be eradicated with these sort of things. So maybe you might see a down trend in people selling eBooks on Gumroad and all this sort of nonsense on Fiverr because essentially you could just do an AI can kind of figure it out anyway an open letter called on the pause of the development of ai systems more powerful than chat gbt4 so then gpt4 that's the newest one the chatbot introduced this month by a research lab open ai which musk co-founded the pause would um, provide time to introduce safety so to, to introduce shared safety protocols for ai systems the letter said it was could pause um cannot enact Oh, let me slow down here if such pause cannot be enacted quickly government should step in and institute a moratorium development of a powerful ai system should advance only once we're confident that these effects will be positive and their risk will be manageable it's actually quite interesting to see that they're actually caring about this stuff because you'd think a lot of these people would just be racing to in to innovate and to be first so they can profit from this so the fact that they're really worried about this probably I would say is, is more of a self-preservation thing than looking after the wider society. Like they're actually worried about their own jobs, about their own standing, as opposed to us. Something tells me, because I think a lot of us, you know, we're hardwired to look after our own personal interests. So I don't really think these, this is like some altruistic 
point that they're trying to do and almost we're trying to save humanity now nah, i think they're trying to save their own jobs like a lot of these cfos and ctos are going to be rendered mute basically because i'm also thinking about it on the back of it i remember there was a time when i first started getting working into startups i wanted to when i first started working in startups like everybody i wanted to start my own startup right but i don't have any knowledge of coding or how to code in the slightest so you know a lot of people would basically start a company and have one person be the ideas person and one people one person be the coding person but to find that code that was just when you it's just hard there was no fiverr there was no like i don't know platforms you can maybe i don't know what else you can go on but it just didn't exist where you could just find someone to code something for you and in your head you think you know developers you have to pay them a lot of money so it just didn't make sense so nowadays if you're that person who's got loads of ideas and you and you want to idea and you want to basically you know put out the minimal viable product out there to kind of test your assumption or your idea to see if it works and there's a need for it you can spec out some pretty basic code on chat gpt and kind of get it running or whatever platform open ai platform and kind of get it set up without having any experience or knowledge of how to code so you could essentially build the next Uber, the next Facebook, the next Instagram, just from an idea alone with no technical expertise whatsoever, and then kind of flesh it out as you go along. Ooh, you legitimately get these one-man machines or one-woman machines who just you know pres um, publish and create these startups, and then just with a with a sole intention of kind of selling them. Like, okay, I proved this idea works. I'm going to sell it to this company. And then you just kind of keep on rolling on just like rinse and repeat. And you can just maybe launch and sell 10 startups in a year and become a gajillionaire in a short space of time because you just got all these amazing ideas, but you never had a chance to kind of, you know, enact them because you don't have any technical expertise. Yo, yo, yo. Oh, also, maybe you think, what about jokes? I'm actually going to see that because there's, there's a Tom Brady special where he did it with AI. I'm actually going to search that and get that up. But imagine with jokes as well. Could you do that as well with jokes? <laughs> if you're a comedian, just punch up your jokes on chat, G on chat GBT. Write your actual joke where you performed on the stage and then punch it up and say, oh, give me five different variations of this same joke. <laughs> Mad. Anyway, develop, um, humanity can enjoy a flourishing future with AI. The letter says, having succeeded in creating powerful AI systems, we can now enjoy an AI summer in which we reap the rewards engineer these systems for a clear benefit of all and give society a chance to adapt rather they're scared isn't it? they're really worried give society a chance to adapt that's how fast we're going so in, on one sense with technology i feel like especially with smartphones right most of us have a variation of these right most of us have a variation of an iphone a phone that's kind of like this rectangular design with the touch screen that you can touch and stuff what right? basic shit and it feels like we've kind of reached a bit of a we've kind of reached a bit of a brick wall with the design of these phones. It hasn't really evolved or developed any further than this. So this is where kind of innovation has stopped. And then it feels like with AI, this endless is still going, but it's going so fast now that the tech guys are getting scared. Right? They're, they're sending out warnings like please stop. Anyway, um, some ultimate chief executive of OpenAI did not sign the letter. Of course he didn't. Mark, Mr. Marcus and others believe that the persuading the wider tech community to agree to a moratorium will, sorry, to a mor moratorium will be difficult, but swift government action is also a slim possibility because lawmakers have done little to regulate artificial intelligence. Yeah, maybe that's something that lawmakers end up doing because you would imagine, right? You'd imagine, you'd imagine this. If AI does end up taking over, and it does end up rendering, again, imagine, myself included, it does end up kind of rendering my job experience mute. So any experience I have in marketing, any experience I have in social media, any experience I have in customer service, any experience I have in operations, it completely goes because ChatGPT and OpenAI in general kind of take all those jobs away and automate them in some way, shape or form. That would then mean someone like myself who's just regularly working, regular, working a regular job would then need to have the government step in and support me in some way they would have to kind of pick up my slack in some way shape or form or kind of plot or kind of give me the ability to make a living because i can't make a living in that way anymore because technology has kind of rendered me mute then what because i can't exactly because that whole term about learn to code we can't learn to code anymore because there's you know i mean these things have taken over our ability to kind of code and become you know actually viable in the job marketplace so it does throw up a lot of interesting suggestions and solutions so maybe governments will step in because most governments especially won't want to pay you know people money not to work and shit or to kind of make up that slack they don't want to do that they'd rather um you know rather enact some laws that kind of halt the development and innovation of these things which again you'd think 
is very Russia-like, right? If the government does step in and say, hey, AI is becoming too advanced, we need to rein it in, it's very totalitarian. It's very big brotherish. It's very much like Russia. People complain about Russia and say the, there's no innovation coming out of Russia because of how it's set up over there. But this is giving North Korea if they end up doing it. If governments around the world end up halting development of AI because they're scared of the wide impact of society and they don't do anything else in between, it's a little bit spooky. A little bit spooky. So it makes you seem, you know, is Putin really that bad of a guy, really? <laughs> uh, who knows? Who knows? But yeah. What people are saying in the chat here, the government's wild for allowing the purchase with no oversight and allowing it to become without maintenance of sure shed. Um, what people are saying here, no, bro's coding is still valuable. Yeah, of course, no, coding is still valuable for sure, but over time, it will become less and less valuable. It will become like all things. The top, top coders in the world will still always be in demand, but entry-level type shit, I don't know what that means, entry-level coding, but there is an entry-level, I'm sure, that will become mute because you can just have it done by artificial intelligence. Um, what people are saying here, uh, I definitely don't want to be stuck on Earth forever. Says Natasha Ski. Yeah, I want to get on that plane, mate. Fly me off, fl plane. Fly me on that flipping, um, fly me on that fucking SpaceX rocket, mate. Get me to Mars. Get me to Mars. Let me start on there. Let me be the only DJ on Mars. ChatGPT. Yeah, exactly. What's the, what Coyle is saying? ChatGPT. How can I hit all Asian massage parlors? <laughs> you know what's funny? Actually, talking about massage parlors, it's not. A, I, I'm always curious as to why it's not that much of a popular thing in the UK. We do have them. Don't get me wrong. We do have massage parlors. I'm not saying we don't. We do have massage parlors, but massage parlor culture isn't as popular as I would imagine it would be here because I don't know. Part of me thinks if we don't really have, we don't really have strip club culture in the UK. They do exist, but they don't, not in the same way we have it in America. And I'm always curious as to why massage parlors never really kicked off here. I don't know why that is. Cause that's the kind of feels that it's the easy, it's the kind of, easier way to kind of do it you know to kind of do that shady business i'm not really too sure why it didn't kick off it just hasn't really taken off but um yeah we do have some massage power but not as many as you have in the states you have a whole map because i remember I, I did my googles there's a map that exists there's a site that has like a map that you can kind of find local fucking massage parlors in your area and shit and they use code words for places that allow you to you know get fucking tugs and whatnot it's kind of hilarious to be fair but anyway <laughs> Big up the massage guard, the massage parlor mandem. 